Hi there, this is Nice Flowers. I play on the Xbox platform. And I'm in a clan called Dad's Army, Australian clan. Uh, we play pretty regularly on Battlefield 4 at the moment, and we're all eagerly anticipating this title, Battlefield 1, due for release later this year. So here's the multiplayer gameplay from E3. Oh, teabag right there, and I thought I'd do some commentary. I started out on PC uh, playing Battlefield 2, switched to console some years ago, and my configuration on my controller is such that, I don't know, my teabag button is the right joystick, so it takes a long time to teabag someone, so I don't know if it's more insulting or less insulting to teabag slowly, or maybe it just means you care a bit more. Here we are at E3, look at the setup they've got here. So they've got all these celebrities, YouTubers, some you may or may not know. Uh, I guess the most famous person <laughs> In this video is Snoop Dogg, and uh, he's actually being led in his squad by Stone Mountain. You can see there, um, well, not at this point in that squad, but Stone Mountain's leading, leading the squad here. Anyway, this game, my opinion of it, uh, is obviously recorded off PC, but look at this, it's just fantastic. Uh, Biplane's got stuck on the windmill there, but it looks fantastic. I think that returning to the World War One genre is um, a really good idea. A lot of people have been in gaming for a long time, like myself. This reminds me of the old days. That there was a feeling about that um, early World War Two Call of Duty and also Medal of Honor. Uh, was it called Pacific Assault? Um, going back to World War One is a great thing. And it, look at this tank. I mean, look at the design. Just how chunky it is. Um, some of the features that you can see about the the way those tank plates are rolling in front of the screen. I don't know if that's the technical name, but that's what I'm going to call it. Anyway, I'm just going to make a commentary on what I see. Uh, obviously, big event. Uh, games are eclipsing films now in terms of revenue and world interest, and you've got a big setup here, a lot of excitement around this title, and I think the YouTube video for the trailer release for Battlefield 1 was one of the most liked or the most liked YouTube um, video of all time, and certainly... It's giving COD a run for its money. I think COD, used to play it in COD 4, used to love that game, but I, I think that game's just a, an arena shooter now. And as some people say, it's more of a killing game than a tactical game like this one is. And that's why we play it. There's nothing like playing this game, squatting up, talking to your teammates uh, when you're not trying to team kill them or jumping on the other team, and working together to uh, capture the objective in Battlefield 4, we used to play a lot of Russian on Bad Company 2 in the Dad's Army Clan, but now we're playing uh, a lot of Conquest. <laughs> it's Jamie Foxx <laughs> having a bit of a sing. Some of the people that they brought in to play this game, um, you know, I'm kind of surprised I didn't think Jamie Foxx was a gamer. Although, if we look at his KD later on, we'll probably find out that he is, and I think I had a sneak peek at this earlier on, and there's some pretty poor KDs. Um, KDs are a really important stat to improve i used to ignore mine for a long time and really it's i mean been gaming for forever but i, I just think that uh, your kd a good kd means you're much more efficient so it's a nice monitor set up here and uh, various squads on each side playing so i'm kind of leaping around here but you can see that some of the the guns and uh, the design of the game it's pretty spectacular You've got the airship area in the distance, biplanes. Uh, look at the guy there in the middle. I don't know who that is, but they've got the old school aviation cap on. He's got the gla the opaque glass lenses. I don't know how you can see in game with that setup. And as I said before, I think it's a really good to return to this part of history. And it was called the Great War for a reason, because a lot of people died. It was much more destructive than World War Two. I can't remember if it was a... Buff. You know, penicillin, an infection, was the biggest killer. Sorry, penicillin actually kills uh, bacteria. But the discovery of penicillin was one of the greatest um, things to come out of medicine to counter the disastrous effects of war, because a lot of people would die from infection. And so having an awareness of this... Although some people think it's kind of um, contradictory playing a shooter, but I think that one of the upsides of this 
particular genre of gaming and being a shooter is to have an awareness of how shit war really is and uh, how significant World War One is. And a lot of people who are gamers now and who are younger, playing uh, and playing shooters and having no awareness of this conflict and what it was like and how huge it actually was. This Snoop Dogg. <laughs> smoking a joint, sitting next to Stone Mountain, and Stone Mountain's calling shots. I mean, Stoned Mountain now. Just a hilarious. Um, Stone Mountain is just one of the funniest gamers out there, and really, I only discovered that guy six months ago. There's a video of him um, tagged as overly enthusiastic gamer. Uh, he tends to join COD servers, Battlefield servers, puts a lot of military talk into his... Uh, which is actually valid strategical speak. I don't know if he was in the army at any point, but he's very good at ad living, and he's also got um, some pretty funny. Oh, I'm talking. For some reason, Siri likes to talk to me. Yeah, I'll just put that over there. Okay. So, one of my uh, squad mates, Chaff, was saying that one of his criticisms of this was that the the weapons sometimes obscure the frame so you can see that huge magazine on that weapon was kind of didn't bother me too much but um i think this is a stunning looking game you can see here we've got some beautiful cinematic uh, elements like lens flare we've got the zeppelin here under attack apparently quite hard to kill and look at this just an amazing vista of the conflict and they've just done a great job on this here I mean, obviously, though, it's a huge target. As we can see, it's getting shot already. So it's uh, it's not something that you're likely to miss. In the Just having a listen to the commentary there. All that power right there. If you were down and you need and a couple of plans, one of the features of the Zeppelin is when you kill it, it actually will just crash anywhere. I guess one of the things about Battlefield 4, you know, which I... I didn't feel ripped off about, but I thought it was, no, 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 we're misleading, it's appropriate. But there was kind of like a template destruction. So they was talking about you can destroy anything, but really it was a template of destruction that always remained the same. But in Battlefield 1, you can destroy everything. There's nowhere to hide. And some of the quirky physics of Battlefield 4, like if you go on Hainan Resort, you'd get a lab and then you drive it over to B and you could knock everything down. You'd knock the building down, but, you know, there was one pole on the tennis court that you couldn't knock down which is kind of funny. But um, in this game, you apparently can knock down everything and the Zeppelin, you knock it down, you shoot it down and it will fall anywhere. And then it creates another feature, another obstruction within the game. So that's kind of great. Um, so I'm just looking at some of the, the movement from the first person perspective there. Just little things like that I found a little bit annoying. I'm being pretty picky, but in, say, uh, Battlefield 4, the swimming motion always found it kind of ridiculous. Um, and so it's just interesting to watch the way the character moves, how you, how you move, how, how, how true to life it is. Look at these tanks. I just think that they're kind of fantastic. And in the game, a tank is a class in itself. Some nice paintwork there. This tank just looks violent and it literally is a tank of metal. A bit of bad parking going on there. There's a parking ticket waiting right there. Um, so we've got Jack Frags in this squad. Lupe Fiasco, Captain Sparkles. <laughs> what a combination of people. It's pretty funny. And of course, everyone here is playing on PC. I used to play Battlefield 2 on PC. Um, I used to love playing Commander. And I haven't played it as much, but I've played a lot of Commander in Battlefield 4. But uh, Commander mode, I, there's been no mention of it. I haven't heard any news about it in Battlefield 1, if it exists. I think they have to make it more interesting. Because really, as, as Commander, you can just spam. I found a way to really spam and get your points and leave your crate in places like... Um, Locker or Metro to really gouge those points out. Also, another thing to note too, and I do want to talk about this: you can actually self-repair your tank. Yes, you can. So you can stay in the. Now, the other thing about the font of the HUD is, to me, it looks a lot like 
the Hardline font and the Star Wars font. It could be exactly the same. I never really liked Battlefront and I never really liked Hardline. It didn't really work for me. And a lot of my squad members, some liked it, some didn't like it, but we, everyone pretty much just came back to Battlefield 4 after a while. And I think that you should have the option of changing this font maybe to something that's uh, more Art Deco or something like the film Metropolis. That old school font. Font options would be nice. Another thing I think they should include in the game is accountability or efficiency. So some kind of efficiency. KD is one thing. KD is a rating of efficiency. But if you're just, you know, in the previous Battlefield titles, you could just jump in a jet and then you could fly over to the other end of the map over your enemy, go and cap a flag near their spawn and no one's looking. But you're wasting a multi-million dollar jet to get there because you just eject from it. And that doesn't make you an efficient player or getting a light machine gun and just spamming um, as I often do to counteract my shit eyesight oh the Hindenburg's come down um, you know there's just inefficient ways to play that you can get a lot of points or kills but they don't really represent you as a good player and I think you should be have a mode where you're accountable an efficiency mode but no there doesn't seem to be any mention of that at this stage anyway here we are capping flags we're with Timio here game theorist um and these tanks are a feature, the Zeppelin is a feature there, a bit of residual flame work going on. Okay, so what I'm interested to know is that, yes, the Zeppelin can fall anywhere, but does the template of destruction look the same every time? Are you always going to see the same shape, the, the bones of the Zeppelin in the aftermath? You know, does it matter? I just think that we should get to a point, and I am by no means and have no knowledge of uh, coding whatsoever. But, you know, if you've got some kind of AI element in the game so that it can destruct in a truly unique fashion every time. Um, I don't know the ins and outs of that and I'm not going to speculate about it, but that's what I'd like to see. So if the Zeppelin destructs and falls, we don't want exactly the same shape. I'm, no, I'm repeating myself. Okay, a bit of biplane action here. You know, I found the jets in Battlefield 4 just notoriously difficult to get kills on in any of the assignments. Just took you forever. It actually drove me into a rage. I think that was part of the Phantom assignment. So, uh, will the biplanes be any better or worse? Okay, so round one's over. Bit of celebrations there. <laughs> Is that Wiz Khalifa? There's Snoop Dogg. And these two guys here. It's like all the nerds and the cool kids have gotten together in the same same spot, brought together by Battlefield. Um, yeah, I'm feeling a bit jealous about this event. Look, there's Zac Efron. Round two's loading up. So it looks pretty good to me so far. It'll be interesting to see what comes out of the beta. And some of the maps and the speculation about the maps. There's been other YouTubers out there. I kind of find it annoying who I think are predicting. I don't know. I, th I think that they have had, they've been privy to the game. They've signed non disclosure agreements and yet they get on there and they kind of hint around what might be in the game. Um, and, you know, to me they're speculating on stuff that did pretty much just to get um it's clickbaiting really um one of the while these guys are talking one of the other things that kind of has annoyed me is that with the backs backwards compatibility of uh, xbox one platform i really wanted to get back and play battlefield 3 bad company 2 uh, i enjoyed finding uh, glitches on those games and exploits on those games um, and a lot of that fun was kind of eliminated by the, the vertical elements of Battlefield 4 so I don't think anytime soon the backwards compatibility is going to occur because obviously that would um, hack into the profit margin of DICE for their upcoming Battlefield 1 title but you know why don't they do what they did with uh, Call of Duty 
and they had the Redux version of um, COD 4 on it, but I think you had to buy it with the the latest Call of Duty. So why don't they do the same? Like, give an option to if you want um, access backwards compatibility on Xbox One. I guess I'd have to talk to Microsoft about it. I don't, don't know how those agreements would work, but so that somehow you can have the option of playing Battlefield 3, Bad Company 2, if you access this title, then then they don't lose out. On, on making a buck. <laughs> now, you, did you see the Zeppelin parking area there too? I mean, I'm only assuming this is like these inflatable um, elements, maybe so the dirigible can come down and know where to park, but they're pretty funny. There is a certain comic element to uh, Battlefield 1. And who we got here? Major Nelson. Probably the oldest guy in the room. He'd be late 40s. Okay, we've got X Factor here. Who absolutely, um, him and level cap. Clean up. Okay, so getting in the tank now. You can see it's a four seater. We're on the front left hand side. What is that, port or starboard? Can't remember. Um, and this map is called Monastery. It's funny, when you're looking at this for the first time, there's that honeymoon period when you have a new map. You don't really know it that well, and every time you turn a corner, everything seems new. And then, doesn't matter how big it gets, after a while in your head, you you just the map gets smaller because you played it so many times. There's Jamie Fox again. <laughs> He's talking smack. Uh, it's too funny. Be too distracting playing next to him. Are you laughing too much? Okay. Who are we with here? I'm just looking at the strategies of this guy here. Interesting now because obviously it's uh, World War One. The technology is a bit different, and so your scopes are going to be less. Oh, taken out! Nice snipe. I will at the end of this have a look. How much we got to go here? Ah, uh, got another 10, 15 minutes. But I'll have a look at the scores and look at the KD after this round. Um, that gun there, I can't remember what it was, but I'm sure I've played it in previous titles. Has anyone ever played, uh, was it Call of Duty title, World of War? That was a fantastic game. And I think that that's why, I mean, I, I love that game. I ended up actually um, rage quitting it and snapping the disc in half, but that's another story. But that was one of my favorite titles. And maybe that's what I'm yearning for in this game here. And it was back when Call of Duty was more like Battlefield and it wasn't just spawn, die, spawn, die, spawn, die. Now look at this thing. What is, it, it looks to me like, it looks like something I've got in my cupboard, uh, cheese grater. And you've got to realize that the same with um, games like World of Tanks. These guys have to go out and they have to find a lot and research all this old stuff and then I guess draw it up in CAD but, and then go out and try and find working uh, tanks or anything that's kind of remotely sounds the same and record it on site. Then World of Tanks, they've done that with a lot of the vintage tanks. So some pretty intense gameplay here, and uh, having used PC before, if you're a PC player, you'll know that it's actually a lot quicker lining up your shots. In fact, I've always found the uh, Xbox controller, PlayStation controller, just an unnatural way and a slow way. Console is just not as efficient, not as quick, and just things like driving a tank and having to designate and drive and you're finding your fingers in all sorts of awkward positions so PC has always been more the, the problem with PC is that apart from graphics quality and you can spec it up and make it look better is that if you're intrinsically lazy and you like lying on the couch you can't do that on PC and I don't like gaming upright I like being at the end of the day lying down talking smack with her friends and that's why the Xbox appeals to me um, the graphics quality obviously improve over time. And that problem won't exist anymore. We'll probably have to be up to VR gaming by then on a mass level. Okay, so... Art oh, level one. It will be interesting too. What Easter egg elements, I'm sure there's. it's going to be... You know, that's the thing I really thought that they nailed in Battlefield 4 was... Um, the pursuit for the phantom bow 
solving the problems, all those little Easter eggs that, in the sub games, which I mean, I think glitching is in a way a sub game, but um, looking forward to that. But there's Jack Frags, who I have a huge problem with because he pretty much goes out. Don't don't ever if you ever want to play Easter eggs on Battlefield, don't ever watch any Jack Frags video because he just sits there and he, he's the guy you go to a movie. You walk into the cinema and he tells you the end of the film just as you're sitting down so he can get the voltage. I mean, and he pretty much does it so he can get the views and reveal all the clues. Uh, and I think that, you know, the Easter eggs are there for you to solve. They're there for you to do it with your squad. They're not there for some guy to come in and tell you the answers so he can get his YouTube views up. But then again, that's what I'm trying to do. Um... But yeah, it will be interesting to see what kind of Easter eggs exist in this game. <laughs> Zach Efron again. He's actually quite intense uh, playing it. Now, is he using... Yeah, see, okay, so some of the guys are using PC controller and some are using Xbox controller on PC. I wonder what Snoop's using. Spliff controller. Couple of windmills there. It's pretty fast gameplay, I must say. Stone Mountain here. He's got to lay down some uh, health in a second. What's he on? 26%. It's pretty quick. Looking out the door. Yep. Yeah, good choice. Get out of there. It's pretty wise gameplay. You with a <laughs> scoped sniper rifle versus a tank? Don't think so. Um... Interesting how you can see the enemy or other players now. The, the default was that kind of orange glow to the guy that killed you or girl that killed you in Battlefield 4. Uh, they kind of changed that slightly here. And nice grass elements. What was the name of that? Uh, there was one of the nice levels on COD 4 with the grass. Anything basically with green in it is nice. So, here comes the... Uh, I think this is a great feature. Hopefully it's not kind of nerf like the... The, air, the airship, gunship in Battlefield 4 was good, but not many people jumped in it. It was easy to kill. It wasn't that destructive. You know, I guess it, it's spectacular, but uh, does it have any soul? Okay. Oh, hatchet kill. And it'll be interesting to see how many weapons you can get, how you can spec them up. I do notice that you, when you're customizing down the bottom, there's oh, it's kind of like a dock down the bottom and uh, all your weapon elements can be change from there and it seems just a lot more minimalist than what you see in Battlefield 4 so I don't know if I like that yet um, oh startup disc is almost full that's not good all right well maybe that's a signal to switch out of this but that's my opinion I think it's a great looking title. I can't wait to play the beta. I think it's like a lot of good elements. The only thing I don't like about it so far is the font. Um, and just keep it here and, and I'll do some more updates uh, in, the, in the following months. But uh, hang on, let's just go back there. I'm going to pause this and let's just look quickly at KDs. Okay, so quickly looking at this. Pirate Palm is up top. Um... German side, uh, 14 and 4, Vicky Star, and oh, Google Drive's protesting as well. Wow. Stone Mountain's 3 and 2 so far. Who's got some really rubbish KDs so far? Uh, Jesse Wellens. <laughs> kind of useless. And let's go over this side. Um, 11 and 5. Smart Snipe, Neebs, 0 and 2. Uh, nothing much to talk about there. I don't think it's all the way through the game. Jack Frags, 7 and 5, doing all right. Okay, so that's my view. Battlefield 1, it looks fantastic. And 
stay tuned more news soon on the battlefield this is nice flowers over and out <laughs>